I really hope that getting older is not just a series of realizing how you've been an asshole like so many times in your life. Yeah! You really start to dissect and see some really fucking shitty things that these people you considered were your heroes that they did. And you're like, holy fuck, that's so fucking twisted and selfish that you even had the balls to do that. Let's get it on, you fucking dipshit asshole. Like, <laughs> fucking just read it like oh, you're uh, some emotion. Like, let's get it on, you dipshit. Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh my goodness. Wow. What a ordeal. <laughs> Fuck. <Woo. laughs> Man. <laughs> Jesus H. I Christ. Yes, I almost finished that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh so hello long walkers. <laughs> this is the state of things. Um welcome to Episode 74 of Long Walk Short Drink. The audio only episode. <laughs> Rat, like, like the imposition of Google. Like, I'm trying to give it like a Star Wars esque name. <laughs> yeah. Like, it definitely should have like uh, the Empire. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, um, yeah. We absolutely just got trounced on by Google. Um, and I'm going to say, I'm going to be the one to step up and say, this is on me. Um, in my little bit of research, I had not, they buried it. And you don't know when you get ready to join the live session, it has the white box that pops up there. That's like the, like you're about to join a Google, oh, uh, live oh, Google sure. hangout. You yeah, know what I mean? And yeah. it says like, and you hit, I agree to let you in. Right. Yeah. Buried in that on the creator's account, the one that's hosting it, added oh. to that same white box that everybody sees, it said they gave notice that they were taking that away. Oh, I never saw that. So, But it would have only been on the LWSD. And, uh, yeah. Account? Oh. But, but it's so. buried in that box. It's the same. It looks exactly the same. Yeah. That's no excuse. I mean, I know that's... I mean... Well, then you're not going to read it. Who's going to read no, it? Was it like red or anything like that? No, no. Oh, I mean... Fucking dicks, man. <laughs> so, unbeknownst to us, and I, there's all these articles pointing to it all the way back to January while we oh, were still January. fucking recording. Oh, like, wow. how fucking, like, clueless, like... Man, I used to think I was like so up to date on stuff, but we went to go live tonight for our <laughs> triumphant return. And like the option is grayed out, like uh, Hangouts on Air has been discontinued. That's what it said. Man. So the only option is to do a, a single stream with a single webcam. No like guests, yeah. no switching between those feeds, anything like that. Yeah, so, not even the two of us, it, it sounds like. No, no. I mean, I guess. Uh, no, yeah, we couldn't talk to each other, though. I was going to say we could record our feeds individually, but we couldn't actually no. talk to each other at the same time. <laughs> Jesus. Man, does that suck. So, and then... In the little bit, like one Google search, I find out that, so we decided to go old school and do like we started the podcast. We are currently in a Google Hangout. You are not going to see any video of, from this. You're only going to get the audio of it uh, because in the, in the limited, in the limited search, one Google search. In the hangout we're in right now, that's going to get discon starting to get discontinued in October. Oh, Fuck. so we can't even, yeah. We can't even do this. <sighs> um, I found that quick, like, I didn't read it carefully, but it looks like you can record Skype calls and as MP4 video files. So that might 
working. I'm out. wondering maybe we switch to Twitch, man. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I I just don't. Yeah, I don't know how that one works as well. Um, but I bet that. I, I mean, work, that's right? not like I. Um, if only we had an opportunity that we could. If only we knew Experiment. someone who who did t- Twitch. <laughs> oh yeah, and if only we knew someone who did Twitch. Um, it was who if if he's worth his salt, he'll say, "Why just pull out your pocket-sized right. supercomputer <laughs> yeah. so that you can yeah. start." We should probably learning call him, from the internet. <laughs> oh shit! Piss. Oh. <laughs> Bob Saget. Bob Saget! <laughs> oh oh fuck. Oh man. So um yeah. yeah. Let's open a Let's fucking open beer. Yes. <laughs> uh so the beer I'm having tonight is fuck you, YouTube. <laughs> you know what? I you know what I even said? This is what I even fucking said to myself. I was like, don't get on there. Don't get on there and don't Kevin Smith DVDs this. Uh, <laughs> don't rip YouTube apart. You still got to put your fucking media up there. Yeah. You still have a network in there right now. You still have <laughs> followers, people who are going to expect something. So you, if anything, just provide for them. So don't fucking bash YouTube because Kevin Smith had to come back on those fucking words. He had to come back <laughs> on the DVD of the same films and, set up and say, I may say... At the beginning of this, <laughs> fuck DVDs, but I didn't mean it. Oh, so fucking YouTube. They got to have Man. something up their sleeve in terms of something else they want people to do. Yeah. But, oh, um, <clears throat> just for <laughs> any new listeners, I'm Dave in Northfield, Minnesota. <laughs> And I'm fucking Palmer. And we're fucking and Dayton, pissed. Fu- and Dayton fucking Ohio. Uh, oh, God bless it. <laughs> I know. Such a fucking drag. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, shit. I, I mean, there are obviously worse fucking things going on than this goddamn world right now. <laughs> Even in my fucking city. Yeah. Holy shit. That we could be worrying about. I get, I'm, you know what? I get to see your beautiful face. We get to talk. Likewise, uh, yeah. Uh, the experience for us doesn't actually change, um, even though Google is doing this to us. <laughs> um, this is how we always experience the. Talk, yeah. Though this will have to change a little bit. I guess we won't be able to do it through Google. But damn. Um. Well, wait. So yeah, you want to crack a crack a beer and then start to uh catch up <laughs> yeah let's do let's do this so um fuck uh grab your uh, beverage of choice long walkers uh tonight i'm planning on drinking this is a uh sagatuck brewing company a neapolitan milk stout it is i had the first time i had this was at a brewery it was a guest tap and uh it was nitro. It was fantastic. Oh, nice. Yeah. What are you drinking? I'm just drinking a Guinness, uh, you know, like the thing, a stout, like draft stout, so that it'll, uh, you know, we'll get the same kind of milky. Business. This beer actually tastes like a bowl of melted Neapolitan ice cream, if you were to drink <laughs> oh, it. Oh, wow. It's so good. I highly recommend oh. it. Ready? Yeah. On three and three. Woo. Nice. Okay. I haven't had one. I'm craving one of these guys. And the, uh, what does the cap say? The cap says, here's to happy. Oh, indeed. Yeah. We all need that. I just realized it was pouring really nice and loud and I was doing it way off mic. Oh, well. I'm That's all right. Out of practice. Back from our, I think it was like six weeks or I think. Yeah, we like had that. a long break. Long break. Oh, that looks beautiful. Yes, it does. Um, indeed. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's catch up. Uh, so, uh, this young kid, uh, who's new to my job started a really good kid. And, uh, he told me this awesome Coca-Cola fact Mm -hmm. that during times where they were, could not afford to make Coke and still sell it for a nickel a bottle because the, 
the bottle of Coke that fit in all their machines or whatever, you know, like it was gate the the, the price point was a nickel. That's what sold, right? Mm-hmm. So when they could not get the price of Coke down to make the nickel of like profitable, they would make the their solution was to load every tenth bottle in every machine with an empty bottle. <gasps> so like the customer got ripped off. Oh <laughs> man! Oh sorry. That sucks. Oh, business. isn't that fucking shady? Business like, is so icky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like or that was their solution. Oh man! Rather than raise, rather than raise the cost to cover their cost, they would rather just rip off every tenth customer. That's kind of a lot of like every tenth is a lot. For, yeah. For, so think about Jesus. that. Think about that in today's terms. First off, if it would be legally possible. For a company to get away with, that. oh, it's got to be illegal, right? <laughs> I just can't think that that would be legally possible in today's market, right? But let's just say that could happen. Could you imagine a company? Because ever, it's about like just keeping your tongue up your customer's ass as far as possible <laughs> until they actually have a legitimate problem. Like they're all about the customer when it's all like superficial, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But yeah. like when you have legitimate problems and they're just like, well, we already got your money, so fuck you, mm-hmm. you know? Like, <laughs> um, so once they get out of, uh, once you once you deal with that, like you're just, I don't know. It's so fucking crazy how you would just think, where's that going with that? I just have this image oh, of your oh, coke could you imagine? crying. No, because they're like no, yeah, be, no, because they want to stay like up the ass of the customers. Could you imagine a company this day and age being willing to just toss out their tenth customer just to be like, like I, I also don't think any business today would see that as a viable business model because in today's day and age, like when you can just tweet, like. Can you imagine how many people, how oh, quick yeah. it would be discovered? One yeah. Like be- one in 10 who's just like, I got a fucking empty bottle of Coke out of yeah. the machine. <laughs> yeah. Like that tweet would happen. And then like one in 10 people would reply to that and be like, me fucking too. Like right. unacceptable <laughs> hashtag. Yeah. <me> too. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like yeah. <a> different. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Well, mine was me fucking too. Oh, not that's me even too. better. Yeah. yeah, me fucking too. <laughs> yeah, it would have me to fucking too is like the the conspiracy of Coke ripping off every <laughs> yeah. tenth customer. What era uh, was that in when that your your coworker was telling you about? I would assume during the Great Depression era, like during, oh, so during like, the thirties. Okay. Yeah, like late twenties, early thirties. Word could not get around. Yeah, five cents or okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit. Now, see, like I I had heard so Hershey's. Their whole thing was they changed the size of the bar to keep it in nickel. So mm-hmm. like they they knew that nickel price point, right? Yeah. And yeah. so their thing was like, okay, so chocolate's really like the ingredients to make chocolate is really cheap right now. So we're going to give like a big bar, right? Mm-hmm. And like, oh, that shit just got expensive and we're not making as much money. So now we're going to make a smaller bar. And so... They kept it at a nickel, but every customer got a fucking chocolate bar, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Who pays the nickel? <laughs> Coke was just like, yeah, we're just gonna steal a nickel from every tenth person. Like, that's a, a nickel. Like, there's a there's a song that, during the Great Depression. One of the top hits during the Great Depression was "Hey, buddy, can you spare a dime?" Oh. Like Coke was willing to steal half of that amount. <laughs> like, <laughs> But I, like a dime was so much money that a number one hit during the Great Depression made that. And Coke was willing to be like, yeah, we can steal half of that from every 10th person. <laughs> what the fuck? That's fucked up. Come on. Uh, and Coke's supposed to like make you feel warm and fuzzy and like you know, all that stuff. I mean, now they're, they've scrubbed just like everybody else. They keep that shit down on the down, like in the basement. There's some like. Every one of these mega corporations, I feel like, that survived from that era has some like deep, dirty, dark dungeon where all that, sh- all those secret, whether it's like it's actually physically existence in our, you know, in, in reality, or it just like it just happened and they were able to scrub it all away. Now you never see any of that, but. It's still there. People still know that that happened in that company. Um, 
I think everyone's got that. I, I, I think you like what there I there's that statistic that like some percentage of every like wealthy billionaire or millionaire is a, like would would fail the sociopath test or the Oh yeah. That makes sense to I mean? me. I mean you can't the little I know of people who have an inordinate amount of money, that rings true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At like, least from what I can it, tell. It, it in uh, in the explanation I read was like like being able to make the decision to lay off 140,000 people. You and I could not live with ourselves if we had to make that decision. No, oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't put myself I, in that position. <laughs> yeah. You would avoid life choices to have to make that decision, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And like these people can just be like, nope, that's okay. Like that's what needs to happen for the betterness of the, of the, for the betterment of my business, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like um, if that's, if that's what, really is is best then so be it then those 140,000 people will have to just like deal i guess you know they don't ah, man and i and that's true like that's the heart like that's why you're in that position is to make those hard decisions right like yeah yeah so not when you're still getting like your 400 million dollar bonuses and you're laying off all those fucking people <laughs> exactly every fucking company ever like that's the all i mean that's things, the yeah. part where that's the part where you start feeling shitty about it it's like no i i can understand all of that in principle but it's still like this disproportionate amount of wealth that just i could see if they were like well, I'm making 30 grand just like everybody else, like just like the average salary of everybody else in my company. You know, like mm -hmm. we all make 30 grand, but I'm the one that has to make the hard decision, you know, like, but that's not what it is. It's like I make I make Scrooge McDuck, McDuck money. I swim in my vault of money every <laughs> night. Yeah. So it's really easy. Like I th like they say they're sociopaths. I think if you're a greedy person and you. I, I'm uh, maybe I'm lumping and profiling, but I could think if like I could get four hundred million dollar bonus, or I could not lay off these hundred and forty thousand people. Like maybe that's really easy to make that decision. You know what I mean? Like maybe <laughs> that doesn't take a sociopath to make that decision. Like I don't know. It's fucking hard. It's certainly not pretty. Uh, there's a no. story that, that comes to mind. I'll have to tell you off air. <laughs> when, when I see you, yes. in like so in many days. hours. Uh, so go, um, sorry, go ahead. We we've rolled into recording areas. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. We did what, a little uh, uh, off uh, for listeners. I, I I've got sure there's a good edit point between that great coke no. story and the uh, good luck, <laughs> cracking buddy. of the beer. So we we did some planning for an upcoming trip that Palmer has to come to Minnesota uh, that we're going to cut out of the show, but. Um, so we were going to figure out where we're going to go, but he's going to come out here. So we're talking, I guess it won't matter when it airs, but in a matter of days of when we're talking remotely right now, our next episode, uh, right now I'm in Dayton, Dave's in Northfield, Minnesota. Yeah. And in hours, like in, in a span of time that you could measure in hours, if you wanted to, um, we will be in the same space as each other for this is the other unique thing. I mean, I guess we've been in the same space for only, episode eight. Well, yeah. For the yeah. Star Wars episode, but only once in like in the last three years or two. Yeah. Whatever. It's but the last only one episode. Well, no, yeah. because we recorded it at long walk, short drink stuff then too. We're going to just going to crank out some long walk, short drink stuff. Eat some juicy Lucy's. Go see the Goonies a couple fucking times. Yeah, dress up as sloth. It's all gonna be fucking awesome. It's gonna be fantastic. Uh, I can't wait. We'll bring take you my R2D2 bag. Yeah, we'll bring you guys along. Um, it's gonna be a good time. Uh, really looking forward to it. Um, but what? Uh, it's ten oh seven. I would like to stick to the uh, yeah, yeah, eleven o'clock time if possible. Time right here. Um, so give me like a cliff notes version of your hiatus. So sure. the last you listeners heard us, we wrapped up a, a great episode, uh, with Twinkie, but can you give me cliff notes? What do you got? Sure. I, um, 
uh, well, uh, very shortly after we did the um, the last episode, uh, Shamrock listeners will know from a previous episodes tweeted to me or tweeted, texted me, texted us the cast thread something called the Bottle Cap Challenge, which was uh, oh, yeah. I'm not sure exactly where it started, but when it basically is like you loosen a, a cap. It was an inter- internet kind of thing that a lot of people were doing. Uh, uh, I think mostly Instagram, uh, but so you loosen uh, the top of a bottle cap and you do what I think is called a spinning back kick. <laughs> you turn around 360, like pivot on one leg and you kick the the cap off the bottle is the trick. Um, when he sent it to me. For anyone that's a boomer or can't use their pocket size supercomputer to do anything outside on the internet uh that's the bottle cap challenge that was really big for a while was it yeah i, I didn't know about it other than him sending it and he's it like had blurbed all across reddit it was oh really it was it what? was huge there was a bunch of celebrity bottle cap challenges and that's what i uh, saw it was like yeah. i tracked it it was like john mayer <laughs> tagged jason statham to do it like, yeah it's yeah. happening <laughs> yeah and then uh there was a bunch of spoof challenges yeah. there was one where like the bottle was set up there and the guy like went to spin and when he comes around he's like eating a chicken leg or something that was really funny <laughs> yeah uh, they were, you, yeah but I, I got to um i mean i do karate in the garage as listeners will know for fun and for for exercise and um <laughs> and so when shamrock was like you should totally do this i think he was joking i don't i'm pretty sure he was completely joking but i was like oh like i can't became con- he said it in the morning and i became consumed of like could I do that? Like, I'm like, if fucking John Mayer can do it, like I can do it. <laughs> and so, so I couldn't wait to get home and do it. And it's up on um, our LWSD Twitter page. So at you LWSD fucking did Pod. it. I, my thing was like people, even J- Jason Statham's form was breathtaking, by the way. And a lot of people would use like slow-mo, uh, which I don't have on my phone, but the, thankfully the bride does. Um, but so my thing was like I wanted to get it high because that's what I like to do in the in the garage. I like to kick high because I yeah. like JCVD and that's what feels fun to do. Helicopter um, kick. Yeah, I can I can do like a half helicopter kick and I can't can't extend both legs. So I'm starting to try. Um, but uh, so I yeah so I got to come home and do it and I got it on the ninth or the eighth and ninth try and that's what you can see online. But I was I mean that was like one of the highlights of my year, not just the highlight hi- hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to be in your best of 2019? Yeah, the helicopter kick challenge that, yeah. or the the water bottle challenge? Maybe. Like. <laughs> Yeah, that's so I'm not knocking you if it is. I'm just like I'm putting that little bug in your ear like that'd be a nice like throwback. Yeah, cuz it's so funny that like because already in the garage, I mean, every other time or every three times, I don't know how often, but like I will often film myself to see like how are the kicks looking. <laughs> like so, yeah. and sometimes yeah. I'll send it to Jacko in Europe or whatever and it's just like just for fun like that's part of like even the fun of that exercise for me and so the idea that i could do it with a purpose (laughs) and a goal and like a a challenge and share it with others have a like an excuse to share it was delightful so i I was really happy to do that (laughs) we saw a billion twin twins games (laughs) um um, we even have like season ticket not full season tickets but like a season ticket package now so that's happened a lot oh and just to that end um, Twinkie had recommended in that last episode that I get the ah uh, herba oh shoot herba something not herbivore herbivacious or something like that it's basically a vegetarian option at the twin stadium that also exists in Minneapolis the herbivorous butcher that's what it is yes um, that's right and so they have two uh meatless options Brats. there a sriracha brat and i think like a i can't remember what the other one is because i'm obsessed with the sriracha brat so like i that's i've gotten to where that's what i'll get i'll get two of them they're not cheap wow but they are delicious yeah. and the onions are oh jesus so i like sriracha that's my condiment of choice sriracha it uh yeah, the it's like delightful. actual legitimate the, the bottle, the yeah, roost, which I didn't the know. The cock sauce with yeah. the rooster on the front, yeah, of it. yeah. which I had no idea was not. I thought that was like a type of sauce, like um, I don't know, is ketchup the sauce or like is that like a Kleenex thing? But it's like that type of thing. It's not. 
it's the only it's not like a, there's a not a generic i don't think well i, think I it's feel like, like there is a lot of like sriracha flavored things that are just ripping that off but there's like the i forget what the brand is it's like hoi young foods or whatever yeah with that chick is it a chicken with no. with a rooster, rooster on sorry, the front yeah. of it yeah yeah so i was and, surprised because uh, i was trying to i got to the it. i got the name cock sauce from dano because it's because it's, yeah. it's got a rooster on the front of it, so you just call it cock sauce. That's fun. And after since like ever since then, that's all I've ever, like. I love calling it cock sauce, <laughs> but it's delicious. Um, my favorite when I'm eating pseudo healthy is I'll take hard boiled eggs and just fucking douse them in sriracha, Ooh. and then like take a bite out of that. One bite, half the egg, tons of sriracha. It's so delicious. And then, like, again, on the remaining half of the egg, and then, oh, man, just this big pile of sriracha on top of that egg. So it's almost like fire at some point, but then the egg comes in and cools it out. Banging. So nice. awesome. Nice. I'll have to try that next, But because yeah. that other the Twinkies recommendation worked out for me and just made those Twins games delightful. Um, we saw Pat Oswald, which I actually don't remember a ton about other than it was fun. <laughs> We saw him, yeah, you know, do no. live stand-up comedy. Um, oh, I turned forty, so that was, you know, you turned forty. I did, yeah. This I turned was your fortieth. Oh shit! Yeah. On uh, well, this doesn't matter, but uh, in July. Um, what? Well, fine. It, I'll say because no, 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 don't say it. Don't, don't say it. You shouldn't say it. Oh, really? No. Well, I had Christmas in July. Let me say that it took me okay. like forty years to realize that that was appropriate. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. I, had, among other things, I had. Uh, so you still said it. Christmas sale. Essentially, that's okay though. People just yeah. wish me happy birthday, which I can handle. No, it's okay. <laughs> my birthday's coming up too. Yes. Uh, that, like I'm. That one sneaks up like, on me on my calendar. Yeah. I have to double check. Um. And you'll be thirty nine. Is that right? Thirty nine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't, have one year left of not being forty. It it doesn't bother me. I will say that uh, it's just I, I don't interesting to care. Say, you know, <laughs> birthdays were just not a big deal in my family. I try not to dwell on it though, because both my parents died kind of young, oh, and it's like yeah. you know. So, I just try not to think about that aspect of it. But birthdays were just not a big deal in my family. They just. My mom on my 21st birthday said, just so you know, this is the last one I'm going to remember. And she was right. Holy shit. Like, yeah. Like, That's I like. Interesting. My, I my No, you could say it's fucked up. It's fucked up. It's I guess your it fucking is a little odd. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> last I'll she, remember. Last she, she'll observe or remember or both. <laughs> oh, both. Both. Shit. My sister, my mom, like one day just went up to just like she was like buddies with my sister right and they lived in the same town and so my mom just like would would they they would just appear at each other's house on regular right yeah and so my mom just like without announcement just like showed up at my sister's house and like went in and like sitting there and was talking and just blah 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 blah. and then just happened to look over and there's a cake on the table and she's like ah you got a cake whose birthday was it thinking they had just bought a cake to eat and my sister was like well it was mine on tuesday and it was like later in the week and my mom had no idea oh. like no idea those like, had to be not... big days for her though you know <laughs> yeah i mean at the, like she, How could she so forget? her her argument uh her argument was i was raised Quaker and nobody celebrated their birthdays on the farm growing up. So it just was not oh. instilled in us. It was just not like the whole idea. That's why it in the problem is, is because my mom had that attitude of like, I'm only doing these birthdays because society tells me I have to, this is all stupid. Like mm -hmm. that was my mom's attitude about them. Hmm. And so because of that, like, now, I don't know if you've noticed now, but I, I feel like from an outsider's perspective, there's this like fucking like, I don't know, like arms race on who can have like who can have the most memorable seventh birthday. It's their <laughs> seventh fucking birthday, man. Like, like yeah. that doesn't it doesn't have to be memorable. <laughs> like I have that attitude and it's like. 
well, we're having a friend's party at this like bounce house USA that cost us like $500 to have that. And then we're going to have a family party over here where you, you can bring presents and like, we'll sit around and like oh, celebrate the part. Like I, it's just like crazy to me. I just, and I think that is because I never had any of that growing up. So it just wasn't instilled. But with my mom, it really was like the, it was like I'm only doing this because it's like this like societal burden that mm. I have to do. Uh, man, so I'm just gonna say this. This is a dark. This is a dark observation. But I've been a really introspective recently, and it's like, you know how they say like you never want to meet your heroes because you'll just fucking despise it, right? And yeah, so they'll let you down. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna tell you if you have any kind of like tumultuous, not even tumultuous, just like if you just have a normal human being relationship with your parents where it's like they're not on a pedestal. It just like it's not always good. It's not always bad. It just is just a normal human relationship. You you do this like after they go, if you have time to be cognizant in your life and be going through things and be able to like look back like you really start to dissect and see some really fucking shitty things that these people you considered were your heroes that they did. And you're like, holy fuck, that's so fucking twisted and selfish that you even had the balls to do that. Like, let alone do it to your fucking kids or your fucking family. Like, and then to see that like through the lens of your adulthood and then to have to process that. I'm just giving a warning out there for all <laughs> for you everybody. like because if your parents are still alive, like it's really hard to do that unless they're like super fucking shitty, like super, 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 super fucking shitty. You can be like, of course, my parents are assholes and they're and I fucking wrote them off 20 years ago. Like that's so fucking awesome that you had the balls to do that for the like for everyone else who just has this normal human relationship with your parents, just be ready for that. You're going to like, you're going to think back on these memories. And there are a million amazing memories with my parents that I think about every day. I think about my parents every day, both of them independently. And I still think about way more good things with my parents, but sometimes it'll just be like, Remember when that happened and how fucked up, like now that you know about this thing of life, how fucked up that was that your parents did that. And you're like, holy shit. Yeah, that was fucked up, man. If, oh, and then you feel like kind of like, ugh, and then you just, you just realize like your parents were just human fucking beings too, just trying to fucking make it like you were. And fucking up left and right. I mean, that's one thing I noticed about getting older. It's like I said to somebody, I think I said it to a client of mine, actually, because I don't know. I've worked with this person a lot, I guess. But I was just like, I can't remember the exact words, but it had something to do with like, I really hope that getting older is not just a series of realizing how you've been like how you've been an asshole like so many times in your life and trying yeah. to be better about it and feeling bad about it and trying to and like, squandered opportunities. No, there's not just that. There's squandered opportunities. There's that one. And then poor choices. Like you get all three of those. It's like this trifecta of like resentment that you just have with your past, you know, and it's all about your past. Yeah, it's so hard then, to resent the. Well, I mean, you kind of yeah. resent the present if you're stuck in traffic or whatever. But, <laughs> but, but then when, you, but do you do this thing though? If you're like, if you're resenting the present, I can trace that back to choices that I've made in the past, and then I'm thinking about those choices in oh, the past. You know what I, I mean? Am, like, I'm very fortunate to. I do, I'm not going to say I don't have regrets at all, but I tend not to. I, my my brain goes a lot of shitty places, but it doesn't tend to like be like I shouldn't have done this. That led to this. That led to this kind of thing. Yeah. But I certainly can understand. That, yeah. That, and that would be awful. <laughs> I mean, I've got enough problems not doing that. <laughs> well, and I think part of it is because I I am such a thoughtful. I try. Let me just. I don't want to generalize my even myself. I try to be very thoughtful about decisions. About I don't try to make anything lightly. 
And sometimes that really bites me in the ass because then I have a lot of indecision because mm. I don't want to. Here's a great example of like a stupid shitty one that Ash could come up here now and totally corroborate. I will burn a movie's worth of time looking through four different streaming services on what I want to watch. And and I know that's a very common problem with people that have multiple streaming services. I don't know, though, if it's the same reason that I do it. I do it because I only get to watch maybe, maybe two to three movies a week. And I don't want to waste those two hours on a movie that's going to... F- that. I could have watched something that was better. Mm -hmm. Like I'm more worried about missing out on something that was better for that little amount of time that I have available to watch that movie than I do of just picking something to just watch. And then I end up not watching something for those two hours because I'm trying to pick something. That hurts. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That, that, I mean, that's a little neurotic. Even me saying it out loud is like, yeah, that's a little crazy. You should probably talk to somebody. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but obviously you don't want to do that. It's not like you're doing it for fun. <laughs> you're like, I wish I could stop no, doing no, this. No, <laughs> no, like, no. There's a point where I'm just like, man, I just want to fucking pick something, but maybe something's better. Should I go back to this thing that I saw three services ago, or should I go to the next service? Maybe there's something there. Oh, I man. don't know. Is there a My common food? like result where you're like, ah, eventually I just do this, and it, it's like, oh. Turns out there's a pattern in that that final there's not, choice. There, there is not a common result, hmm. but there is. I, I, I guess if there is one commonality, it's if I can pick on some, if I can pick something quickly, I feel so satisfied. Like, <laughs> yeah, like good to. for fucking you, buddy, man. Like you picked <laughs> that so quick. Your food's still warm. That's awesome. Like <laughs> yeah. you know. Like, uh, cause I have this like really strict rule where I don't want to start eating until like I'm watching something because oh. if I start eating, then I'll just eat and definitely won't pick anything. And, uh, it, yeah, crazy, crazy. Like this is all saying it out loud. It's all fucking crazy. I'm a crazy person. Like well. I am crazy. <laughs> I think neurotic uh, seems fine, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you know a judgment. <laughs> like if you want to put a judgment, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't mean like there's anything bad about being crazy, but I hear the craziness, um, for sure. It sounds it, it sounds like a hard process to go through <laughs> to yeah. find your entertainment, right? <laughs> oh man, yeah, to entertainment, <laughs> like and it's not entertaining at all. Like it's, and it is literally the fear of. There, the next thing I look at could be better than this thing. Hmm. You know? Um, yeah, that's fucked up. Shit. <laughs> that's where uh, I'm, a, I'm saved from that just from my other, for, my form of neuroses, which is like going, th- like I know what I'm like working my way through or whatever, you know? I'm working yeah. through like watching this and then watching that and what comes chronologically next in this person's career or something else presents itself to where I have this like backlog of, of things like that. Or the bride has something that she's interested to watch together and then we do that. But it's yeah. rarely, there's almost never any kind of deliberation um, about that sort of thing. On my birthday, uh, I watched what? This is 40, <laughs> of course. Oh, geez, yeah. Of course, she tied it to a movie. Fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never seen, I still haven't seen that, which oh, is the, like. I really enjoy it. Like some people say. unofficial it's not, sequel to uh, Knocked, um, Knocked yeah. Up, right? Yeah, yeah, Paul Rudd and. It follows Leslie the Mann's Paul character. Rudd and, and Leslie <laughs> Nance's characters into yeah. their 40s, which is. Great. What what else have you done? I know you've done big things. I'm just oh, trying to get two um, of them. Well, let's see. I did finish this thing I've been working on for ages, at least a good iteration of it that can be shared, which is um, what I'm calling the anniversary edition of my first album, Dog Days. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. I've been working on that for a really long time, actually. Uh, be, th- that album um, I made from like 2005 to 2008 and was the first time I released music under my own name. And... Uh, really set the course for like the next 10 years of my life uh playing music and uh uh i was never like thrilled with the way it came out ironic i mean it's kind of funny to spend three years on something and not be satisfied but uh that's how it worked out and um so 
I there were things I wanted to try to address over the years and you know just never was quite the right time and then I decided to do what I could and in that same time came up across a way of accessing the like the separate tracks of things like say just the tom kick drum or something like that level of separation of what was recorded wow. to yeah. where i could like completely remix things if i wanted to um and so i decided that that would be fun and, and moto was into it moto helped me make that album my brother like you know all those years ago and so we picked out i just like took oh, these are the things that bugged me and this is what would be nice to f- fix and so my rule for it was that i could go back but not forward like i wouldn't record anything new to fix something yeah yeah. i would only ever return to an earlier um you know vocal take or whatever it was like before i maybe it was a weird thing like after three years the album was both over and under baked in my estimation like in various ways so it was fun like um we worked on it for the course like a year and a half he and i and uh i think six of the six of the 11 or 12 tracks are like completely like remixed i think people who are familiar with it if they are if you have heard it if that is something you know if maybe you came to this podcast through my music mailing list or something i don't even know for sure if you would notice <laughs> the differences uh, yeah but i i do i did and um i'm yeah at least just, you didn't lucas it i, I mean you know I don't know if people don't like I haven't heard things where like oh you fucked up this song or that song like I really haven't heard anything from anybody but um, I did it for myself and I was yeah and I'm still kind of in the midst of a much larger kind of pro- project over you that but it I did release the streaming version of it because uh, a lot of what I've been doing is creating what I'm calling definitive digital archive editions of things so if it's like yeah what I would want from a special edition of things that I have made. And uh, so I did that for... That are all f- available for free. Yeah, always for free. Digitally. Yep. Where? Uh, DavidAlman.net and DreamingOutLoudRecords.com. Uh, so what I've been doing is like, I do the, like, kind of the EPs and stuff like that from that time period. I'm just kind of dealing with that time period of 2005 to say 2009, I guess. Uh, like that album cycle, as it were. So um, we did, uh, so Moto's been working on this stuff with me a lot. And so we remixed uh, this 2005 Live Takes EP. It's just voice and guitar, but he can make things sound so much sort of warmer and nicer now. So it's same. Nobody would know the difference, but he and I probably, but it sounds great. And then I would create like these PDF things that would be, if you could, if I had the money and the uh, the fan base to create like vinyl editions, they'd be these gorgeous, like, you know, 12 by 12 multi-page things. But, um, sure. But for free, I can put all that online. So depending on how big your computer screen is or your iPad, <laughs> you can v- view them all like that. And so if you go to davidalman.net and to the music thing, you can see these definitive digital archive editions for the live takes, the Deja Vu EP, the secondhand EP, and and then there's just streaming for the Dog Days Anniversary Edition, which I actually have something positive to say about the streaming service uh, for this. So... In a perfect world, too, like it, for me, that whole thing would be a multi-disc thing, like uh, I have for say Actung Baby or Pearl Jam's Ten or wh- whatever, any number of like these special edition releases. But digitally, I can't really do that. Uh, but it turns out, like with the streaming thing, I can. Like you can have, uh, you can designate this is Volume One, Disc One, or Disc Two. So I'm able to have it appear on wherever it is you listen to your streaming stuff the this is like disc one and which is just the album itself and then disc two is all the extra stuff so that's kind of fun. that's awesome i really enjoyed putting that together i'm still kind of working with it um i'm surrounded by all these like mini lyric books one of the eps that i'm working on um there i'm kind of getting i'm getting close to being done with it um is uh the demos i released something called the dog demos which was like early demos of certain songs but i'm going back to like my little notebooks and my lyric scraps to kind of make this like pdf for that one and they go all the way back to 2001 so it's like 2001 to almost 2008 it's like all the little fragments that made up this i said it on an old show and i don't know where i heard it this idea that you have your whole life to make your first album and this was mine so so I'm just kind of commemorating it in this way and trying to really just dive in and, and do it all. But 
so much. I might've been doing that for a year and a half, but now there's some stuff that you can actually go out and see and hear. There's music videos and all that stuff. So all that's at davidallman.net or dreamingoutloudrecords.com. Awesome. I was going to introduce... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, while you're going to those sites, make sure you're heading over to youtube.com yeah. and heading to searching Long Walk Short Drink, subscribing. We are two subscribers away from our 100 mark, which I don't fucking know what that matters now because we're not using that pretty much as a... We can't use that as a platform anymore. We'll find a way. Uh, we'll find a way. We'll fi- yeah, we'll figure something out, but... uh Please head over there, subscribe so that we can hit our 100 mark. Uh, leave us a review. Did you fucking hear you, Apple's getting rid of, of podcasts? They're do, like, Ash what? Heard, <laughs> Ash no. heard somewhere like they're doing, like, they're getting rid of iTunes. That is mind blowing for me. Like, how am I going to oh. get media onto my phone if oh, I Jesus. have MP3s that I want to put on my phone? How will I do that if not through iTunes? I don't get, like, uh, that's all I do. I, I, even though, like, I just can't quite. Ah uh, no! Yeah, what is, this yeah. is the worst day. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. Like, what is happening? Uh, Anyways, uh, Ash heard that. What was the one that I heard? That podcasts were going away. Like the pot. Either it's the podcast app. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like, because we just got that email about how we need to restructure our metadata so that we show up in searches better, right? For podcasts. Oh, did yeah, yeah. Email? I did see that. I thought it was optional, but I now I'm starting to it think is op- It is optional, <laughs> but uh, it's optional. It's probably something we should do while oh, I'm yeah. in Minnesota. Maybe that's something we can check yeah, off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, we can do that. So uh, I, I, I don't know what this, I don't know what this push is to eliminate these flagship services. Uh, Google Hangouts? Come on. Yeah. I mean, all I can think is they're there to drive, like really streamline the things that they these companies want you to do, how they want to move their yep. products, etc. At what's cost effective for them. That's the only thing I can think of is like, Hangouts has to cost them money. There's no way that we can stream this high def video back and forth real time good enough that we can pull the audio off of it to make a podcast with that, that, video that, doesn't, that yeah <laughs> yeah that that doesn't cost them somewhere you know what i mean and if we're not bringing in the views if we don't have a thousand followers or a mil- hundred thousand followers or a million followers or however much it takes for them to generate ad revenue off of us why would that be cost effective for them that's not cost effective for them you know yeah yeah um so that's that's really troubling for me. It's fucking it. But then at the same time, it's like, I mean, Apple create, in my opinion, podcasts would not exist without Apple. No, they're like, called pods, like after iPods, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Like they, like, and it, and it, and really, like when I finally found out what a podcast was, that it was just this, like, it's a blog. It's really a blog, which a blog is really just a. Um, what is that like an S- RSS uh, feed? Yeah, RSS feed, right? Yeah, which is really all that is is a live update checker. Mm-hmm. So if a website, you can have an RSS feed for a web page if you want to, where like if anything changes on that web page, the RSS feed will tell you that, like it notifies yeah. you, right? And so all really a podcast is is a blog. That's an audio file. So instead of putting out words, you're posting an audio file and your RSS feed pings anybody that's subscribed to a podcast service to to your podcast that you have joined that podcast service. So like you, you've submitted your pot, your RSS feed to be searchable to all these other like aggregates right so itunes was an aggregate for podcast i would say like the flat the first one the flagship one and probably the one that had the most right yeah so that's why it just blows my fucking mind that they're the ones that are like and we are just wiping our hands with podcasts but stitcher you you know you have to you have to give your rsvs feed to stitcher so you show up in their search field you have to give your you you can there's this services i remember when i did wplmr 
there were free services that you could just give your RSS feed and they would ping all of like, there was like 15 different services that they would make sure you ended up on there. Mm. Like, so there must have been some ad revenue or somewhere there was something attached that they would get some kind of thing back. But um, I don't know. Like, it's just, I, I, I felt like the internet used to be really open you know and it just doesn't anymore it feels like you have to be making a million dollars for somebody now to get these services yeah you know yeah. I if i was jack if i was jack black who had my game and i'm not shitting on jack black like i've watched his channel i love his content right but like his content inspires me to provide content yeah and yeah. that's how that works and then you end up with a giant cache or cache or however you pronounce that fucking word of all this like community created content then that, you know, it feeds this hive, mm -hmm. and, you know, and and now you're cut. You're cutting off your fucking foundation. I'm telling you the shit people like us with 98 or less subscribers like we're giving that foundation of content like the fluff that like extra little bit when there's 75 things on the suggested list over on the right side like they need to fill that with fluff there's not 75,000 C list actors <laughs> that have decided to go start youtubing right like there at least one or two of them are shit people just like us that are like I don't give a shit that nobody's out here seeing this I'm putting it out there because I need to create something and eventually eventually there might be a community of people who connect with what I'm creating and then it will be worth it. But they're taking that opportunity away from us in all these different me like methods because it's not profitable to them. And that fucking blows my, that just frust. You're cutting your, this is the definition of cutting off your nose to spite your face. Like, uh, well, I feel like uh, maybe they have found a way to profit. Like, I think, you know, if you look at all these platforms that celebrities are now, like, if you think about Instagram, which seems to be the biggest thing where like, but nobody, I don't know how money is made on that at all. Like it's a complete mystery to me, but it's all like driven by, you know, people, the, you know, these Followers. famous people like you're showing their lives yeah. and stuff and people wanting to see it. Uh, but nobody's necessarily making money for that. So I have to imagine that this, all of this stuff, like I, I remember Kevin Smith, who was an early podcast, you know, you know, pioneer and uh mogul if you could say that i don't know he would he certainly wouldn't use that word probably but i he said for a long time that he's like he, i used to recommend people make their own movies but then i realized like you know that costs a lot of money and all this and to self-express and he's like really the best thing you could do is just create a podcast if you want to just like get, get your ideas out there be creative he's like because you gotta get in now before they figure out how to monetize it or close it off or the gatekeepers kind of close those gates and make it hard yep. for your average person to do it and i think they f must have found a way now to to monetize How fucking it, sad. whether it, whether they'll charge How? us to do it or charge to listen or who knows what right Make it I'm a part of Apple you, Music or whatever. I'm just telling you right now, I'm willing to fight with you as much as possible to keep making sure that the, like this content gets out, like this this stuff. Yeah, we could find ways some, to make it free, <laughs> keep it free, whatever. I've I've right. had to I have to ask myself quite often, or, or like the, even where I work now, they're they're cut pretty late to the game, but people are starting about make talking about making podcasts and. And so I'll be in on these conversations. And one of the main things I was like, you know, I've been doing one. I love podcasts. I listen to tons of podcasts. I love making them as well. And I know for myself making them, I have to recalibrate kind of often remind myself like, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And I remember for me personally, it is to facilitate my friendship with my buddy in Ohio. It's not yep. any of the other stuff. And if the other, th so that like you just have to be governed by like what you're trying to get out of it. If you're, you know, and um, yep. that being my goal, I'm not, I don't want to speak for you, of course, but you know, I, that, you know, even today when we we're having all this trouble, I was like, eventually once we get on the mics and we're talking, like that's the most important thing. Thankfully we Absolutely. can have, I do like to make yep. a show, you know, I'm glad we can make a show out of it, but I'm getting the, the most important thing out of it here uh, just by talking to you. But it sucks that, of course, that, that these kind of major corporations are 
are changing the infrastructure that has existed that has allowed us to like a, enjoy. <laughs> it was, I, it was just so services. easy to be live. I mean, how great! Imagine trying to do Palmer's picks live, right? I like, used to do some live shows at WCTV. Yeah, it was a different. Yeah, if it I, is a different I, animal, then of course. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it happened. Yeah. I'm just saying, like even back then, like you needed a fucking movie studio to be live, right? We did we did a live broadcast of us recording our show with ten minutes of prep online. Yeah, less and than ten like minutes. Like switch of prep back online. and forth, and the audio was yeah, kind yeah. of optimized. It was, it was pretty it, sweet. I feel th- about this. I feel like you feel about how media gets taken away from you. Oh you know? yeah, it's and, the same and, shit. And like, like and, um, in in physical me- like. I don't have a hangouts on air disc, physical disc that I can just put back in and put that back to on the internet. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like they got to dictate, you know, whether or not there were, there were warnings on there somewhere along the line, there was a decision to take that away. And we can't, I mean, the articles I found, they've talked about how it was a simple, easy way to live broadcast a multi-person Google Hangout, like, and and that's exactly what it was. I can't think of a an easier way for us to have so many people in so many locations to get as good a quality as we were getting. Yeah, like you guys yeah. talked about the audio, like the gate was really good, like they had that built in there, and like. How the video quality, in my opinion, always looked fucking great. Even when it looked kind of shitty while we were in it, I always thought when we watched the video, it's, it looked better. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah. I, I thought it looked like it had a better quality to it. So, and then just for that to be just turned off, just be gone, you know, like you have it and then now we're going to take it away. It's hard not to feel like a, I don't know. It's like a betrayal. It's hard not to feel like you, do, <laughs> yeah, like you don't have control because the whole time I spent that time, like saying, I remember sending you text messages, like maybe we should really consider like moving completely over to YouTube. I remember like b- falling over ourselves, being grateful to have that platform to be able to do that so easily, even for as small of an audience as we had. You, you know, on average, we would have like three to five people at best watching us during a live recording. But it's like those three to five people that are committed to your, your video website that 15 years ago, people would have laughed. If you would have said there will be people that will watch this website live for four hours straight, watching two (laughs) dudes drink beer online. There will be five people willing to do that. Right. They would have laughed at you. Come on. Come on. And then to know that that's the bulk of your base. There's not a million Jack Blacks making content. There's a million people watching that one Jack Black, right? Yeah. But the rest of it are the people who were inspired by him who say, I can, I want to make something that I'm passionate about and I'm going to put it out there. And maybe there will be other people that are passionate about it too. And who say, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make something that I'm passionate about. And then all of a sudden you have this, like you have a, you know, a million people with 98 or less followers are still a million people making content for your fucking site. Right. And you can't tell me that there's not a more people with a hundred or less subscribers making content for your site. than there are people with a million subscribers making content for your site. You can't tell me that that outnumbers that there's no way. There's just no way. There's not enough people in the world for that to happen. So don't tell me that you're not cutting your fucking nose off to spite your face. Oh, I'm sorry. That is no, it feels like a real first taste is free kind of thing where it's like, yeah, they're going to like these things won't go away because obviously people wanted them. People use them. I mean, they they will go away in the, in their current form, but they'll be yeah. basically sold back to us, whether it's sold back to us as the creators yep. or or and or as the consumers. Ugh. 
<laughs> and then I'm doing that for, whole, for video podcasters, certainly. Look, well, we're doing that whole, and we're doing this whole thing. And what they're going to be like is like, look how self entitled they are that they just want this free service back. You know, like it's not that we, it's that you gave it. It's like that's fucking drug dealer tactics. That yeah. is drug dealer tactics. Here. You just take all. I mean, like the first hit's free. You just said it. Yeah. I, I don't even have to go through it. The first hit's free, because then we get you hooked. And now when they come back and they say, "Okay, nine ninety five a month, you can have Google Hangouts on air." It's just not called that anymore, and you have to pay us nine ninety five a month. We'll fucking pay that. We're gonna pay it. I know we will. Like, we'll consider paying it at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, fuck. Yeah, it hurts. It's a, it's a, it sucks. Um, we're coming up on, um, yeah, on our gotta. time. Yeah. So, um, what, we didn't even get to New York. I, uh, yeah, there's, oh man, there's some stories there. So, but we'll, we'll, we'll be talking again soon. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit I, about I, what's been going on, uh, on with I you. worked a ton. I, I worked an absolute ton on repair jobs. Um, this whole hiatus, uh, my, so there was that um we went to a great concert we saw oh excuse me we saw spoon cage the elephant and beck all on one ticket like uh that was that was fantastic and i just got to tell you if you have any opportunity to go see beck man what a guy that just like i'm just gonna like i had heard that he did not play loser um, he was like that. That was like one of those songs, like um, uh, "Creep" is for Radiohead. Yeah, right? like yeah. they refused to play that. I had heard that he had kind of disavowed "Loser." He fucking opened with it. That was his first oh, song. Oh, nice! It was so fantastic, and uh, it, it was just it was just all fan service. Um, it was a great like hodgepodge of a of an audience and a crowd. There, uh, I, I mean, because if you think like. Beck, anyways, is going to draw a hip hop. He's going to draw an indie crowd. He's going to draw uh, uh, a little bit of an EDM crowd. There was just this big electric crowd, eclectic crowd there, a uh, good diversity of people. I was very impressed. Awesome. Um, Cage the Elephant was fantastic. They did a great set. We came in like halfway through Spoon set and missed the like very opener. No. Stupid cat trying to get our plant. Uh, <laughs> we did that. Um, Ash and I discovered this like really awesome YouTube uh, Comedy Central channel uh, that we've gone down a rabbit hole called. So um, it's mostly stand up comics not doing stand up. It's a show that takes place in a strip club <laughs> and um, it's hosted by a, a comedian. And then other mostly comedians, but people from pop culture who are willing to do this. Uh, there's been actors on there. There's been musicians on there. A ton of comedians. But the, it's called This Is Not Happening. And they come up and there's like a general theme. It, you can tell like when it aired on Comedy Central, it would have had a there would have been a much longer show with multiple people telling stories mm-hmm. um, all centered around one theme. But on YouTube, they split those up so it's just the person telling the one story. And and so you get, like, they have all these, instead of having a full episode, like, if there's three people telling stories, telling each telling a story, then that would be split into three clips that are on this channel. You can't watch the full episodes. Okay. Just the stories. And so some of them are really short. Some of them are, like, three or four minutes long. And some of them are really long, like 22 minutes, right? Um, but it's these famous people, all people that you've seen in some facet telling them like some of the most horrific stuff, some of the most like endearing stuff, some of the most like, oh, stuff <laughs> like all this different Louis Anderson tells these great stories about his family because he comes from a really big family and, uh, Tom Segura, uh, like he tells a couple stories that are really great. Howie Mandel tells a story. And what's really awesome with him is like, you know, he's a germaphobe, right? Yeah, I've uh, heard that. And, and so 
he keeps breaking the story to be like, I can't believe I'm standing this close to a stripper pole. You can see stuff on it. They didn't tell me about this. <laughs> and like, so he's having issues with the like where he's at while he's telling this amazing story. And it's not, um, so that again, that young guy that's at my, uh, that's new to my job. He, I reckon he's a huge fan of stand up, And so I recommended it to him. And he came back and he's like, you know, we watched some of the, my wife and I watched some of those and she was like belly laughing at them. But she, he's like, you're right. It's, it's different than stand up. It's, it's more storytelling, which for me, I totally, so to see stand up comedians for the most part, they're not doing their stand up. They're not doing their act. Some of them do. Some of them are lifts from acts i've seen on other acts before but some of them are just like here's what it's like to be a comedian you know or like here's some fucking crazy shit that happened in my life that inspired me to do comedy you know uh it's this like really openness that i've i have heard other people comment on that's what they find likable about our show so it really is um i i can relate to that a yeah yeah Oh, I love uh, that too. It's called "This Isn't Happening." Is that the? This is, this is not happening. This is not happening. Nice. Yeah. Um. Uh. Ari Shafir, who is a stand-up comedian, I really like. Uh. He hosts some of it, and then um, I forget who the uh black guy is that does it. Who does the other side of it? Um. Let me host. I. Um. See if it says Roy Wood Jr. Oh yeah, I know him from uh, the yeah. Daily Show, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, it's Ari Shafir and then Roy Wood Jr. Um, are the two hosts of the show. There's like at some point they switch hosts. Uh, so don't get put off, off. Don't be off put by the intro to s- sometimes they're really weird and obscure, and I think they would make more sense if you watch them as a full episode. Um, but just stick around for when the comedian or when the person starts telling their story about what it's like to be this like s- semi-famous person. That uh, sounds fun. I, I looked up or, the website and it's, I was hoping they listed it by person, but they actually list the episodes by topic. It seems. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so in that episode, there's a theme, like a, rec- a, a really common recurring one is oh, like Kevin's one cra- on here, <laughs> one crazy night. Um, where it's just like that we're just telling stories about one crazy night that happened in our life, you know? Uh, but there's family, there's drugs. There's a lot of drugs. One. I like the drugs ones a lot. Like those are really good to listen to. There's one called meth P if you, <laughs> it, it, um, <laughs> And it's a woman talking about essentially finding sobriety, uh, but she and she does that through really talking about rock bottom and her finding her rock bottom, and it involves meth pee. Wow, uh, I'm interested. And then it's on YouTube that they segment the stories by person. Yes, yes, by very person. Cool. So on YouTube, it's very common to like that it'll say. Uh, the person's name first hyphen this is not happening um and then the name of the story uh let me i can't get a there we go oh wow there's a lot because i actually really like stand-ups as well and there's a lot of them that i know um popping up right away this looks fun it's so it's just it's so bingeable. Holy shit, Ashen- Carrot Top looks terrifying. <laughs> oh yeah. Like <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and there and there's I mean, and I think there are all tiers of celebrities that are in there and like ah oh, man, is it so good. It's uh let me see here. YouTube. Oh let me man. See if I can just I'm like so ready tease- to- like get into these i've been Let getting see in real like te- jags lately where i'll just like i used to like listen to a lot of different podcasts but i find as a, right now i just get like be listening to podcasts from years ago that i've just discovered but i'll just like really binge them i'll just stay with them i can't get enough and so this looks like that's there's going to this, happen <laughs> there's this, this one. one so 
the one piece of advice I won't tell you one to watch. I, they're, I'm sure they're all fucking good. My one advice, as opposed to saying watch this episode, is don't be afraid to watch somebody that you've never heard of them before. Yeah, because yeah. some of those have been some of the most rewarding ones for me to watch. Where it, and then you find out they have like seven more this is not happening stories and you binge all of those and then you start looking for their stand up and you're and you know um there's been a few like that there's this one i will see if i can um email it to you or, or i'll text it to you Let me see if i can find it uh because he he talks about where he um is doing stand up and he's like i was doing stand up where when it wasn't cool in the like nineties <laughs> where it wasn't cool to do stand up. And he said this one night there happened to be like four like legitimate gang bangers. And he goes through this whole diatribe of like how he's like, no, they were gang bangers. I'm not profiling. I'm not like, there's like, this is the word that you would describe these men that were sitting in the front table of my show. And like, everybody was scared of it, scared of them. But he like, and he tells this, it's terrifying. Like you feel scared for him. Like when he's telling the story and it ends up turning around where like his comedy that he told that night, even though he thought those guys were fucking making fun of him, they followed him out of the club and he thought he was going to get shot. And like, they basically like tell him this was this dude's first day out of jail and he wanted to go come to a comedy show to try to just be happy. And he fucking loved your set. Like, oh, like, and how nice. much it meant to him. And just like, and like, it's just this guy pouring his heart out on how, like, you know, those things, like, it reminds me of the, the Kevin Smith thing. Like how people come up to him and like your podcast saved my life. And this guy was totally like, and they all end with a moral, like a, like, a good punchline. I think that's like the one rule that they have on this show is like drive it back to some message you're trying to deliver, you know, like what are you trying to get out of this story? That's how, you know, it's good storytelling. And he comes back to, he's like, and that's the night I learned you cannot judge a book by its cover. Like, and just really fucking powerful. And that's like, that's a powerful one. I watched this Joe fucking Rogan story last night about him finding this like strip club in the middle of Alabama. That was a house that just had the words gentlemen's club, like in (laughs) vinyl letters on the front of the house. And like, he met a stripper in there that he literally called shit mouth, like shit breath, shit breath. (laughs) That's what it was. Shit breath. And like, he referred to her as shit breath for the rest of the story. (laughs) So it's like, you got shit breath. And then you got this like gang banger, like heartbreaking, like so awesome story on the other end of it, you know, and like everything in between. It's just so fucking awesome. I fucking love it. Uh, it's so good. So, so good. And I would recommend any of the Louis Anderson ones. Like he's a great storyteller to begin with, but all of his stories are about this giant fucking dysfunctional family that he comes from. And I totally relate to them a lot. Uh, I don't come from a big family, but it's super dysfunctional. Um, it's dysfunctional enough for nine people. Uh, (laughs) That's a big family too. At least in my estimation. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, no, I'm saying his family is nine people. My family is nine people. I see. It's dysfunctional Um, dysfunctional enough 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 for, yeah, proportionally (laughs) for nine people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we did, uh, so we've really been binging that. We went up and visited double D last weekend. Oh, good. Uh, and saw his, him and his beautiful wife and their gigantic family and hung out with them we uh we did this awesome i i hate to like do this like because i hope i don't misrepresent it and i hope it doesn't come off as me making fun of it because it was an absolute blast so we we got up there and his kids kept doing they kept getting our attention so they put on these every time that we go up there they put on these like little skits or sketches right? oh really that's awesome yeah like uh one time they th- we were up there it might have been after their wedding and they did this uh this like condensement of the prequels like the star wars what? prequels and oh i was like God. i was like this is way better than any prequel i've ever watched <laughs> like uh, uh and so 
this time they kept breaking uh, we it was just the three of us adults sitting there like talking about adult stuff and all the kids were on the two trampolines that they have and they would like get our attention and then do this weird sketch they would do some sketch all of them were different but they all had recurring themes barbie and ken and bananas were definitely all recurring themes that happened in there. And finally, I was like, okay, what's the fu- why are your kids fucking obsessed with Barbie? And they're like, so our kids have been, they've rented every Barbie movie that's at the library, at our library. We watch Barbie movies on YouTube. And I'm like, Barbie. And they're like, yes, except they're not watching them to watch them. They watch them to make fun of them. Whoa. (laughs) And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah. So they will watch them and then make jokes along with them. I'm like, so they mystery science theater Barbie movies. And they're like, yeah. So later that evening, we get in the pool. We're swimming in their pool and they bring out a projector and set up a screen and project from YouTube, one of these Barbie movies on a screen while we're swimming and the kids are just like zingers. I mean, just oh like zingers, God. zingers, zingers. From the pool? Just, <laughs> I mean, just destroying this Barbie video. I mean, just fucking nailing it. And I'm interjecting in there and like Double D was like, the kids thought you were just fucking amazing <laughs> and <laughs> ripping at barbie videos they want you to and join I'm their like, troop <laughs> their oh, and i'm troop. like i'm like well i like shitting on things but your kids are pretty that's fucking awesome that that's a, like how i mean just man that's just so hot such a high level of comedy in my opinion um to be able what kids are like no i just want to watch this just so that i can rip on it because it makes me feel good with my collective group of people to rip on this thing you know like and not in a like they rip on it in a way like they love it in a way mm-hmm. you know what i mean like uh uh i i don't know how to explain that but like i i i always feel like me ripping on something is like r- secretly announcing that i have this secret love for it you ah, know what i mean like yeah um so that was super fun. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think what else we did. We did a lot of fighting. That just it's just normal for us. It's happened. We're working on it. I don't want to talk about that. Uh and then let's see. Did the concert. We didn't do any pinball adventures. Um I think that's Oh, did we do this since July? We swapped our dining room area where all the pinball machines were and our living room area. So now our uh so we rearranged our house. That was really a good change. Um but other than that, that I think that's about it that we've done on this since this break. That sounds like some good stuff. I I'm gonna I'm I've got that uh page of this is not happening up in front of me and I think I might might dig into some of those tonight even. Oh, seriously, like, and please let me know what you think about, about them, because so far the people that I've recommended it to who have actually taken up the recommendation, like, they're like, yeah, this is amazing. I, I, I don't know. I just like the idea that it's this, it's familiar people being supremely intimate and vulnerable. I love it when celebrities do that stuff, like where. And and again, the majority of these people, it is not out of their element. They have a microphone in front of their face. They're walking around. They're you know they're doing what stand up comedians do, but it's not stand up. I I don't know how to explain it, but that is accurate. That is, it's not the same as stand up. It's it is storytelling. It's it's good. Yeah, hey, I'm interested to out. see what you think about it. I'm going to start with the people that, you know, like, oh, I want to hear, because there's some of them, like, I listened to that, the one at the top here, even, he's in the, <laughs> so he's the fight, he's the fighter from the fighter and the kid, Brendan Schaub, and I've never really heard his stand-up, but he cracks me up on that show, um, just his personality and sense of humor, he's a, just a silly goose, but uh, 
it's a, he used to be a UFC fighter. He used to be a college football player. Then he was a UFC fighter and now he's a comedian. <laughs> um, but, uh, so it says, he says about the biggest fight in his life. So like, I'll start there, but I, you know, uh, or in things like that where like, Oh, I know this person. Um, I, I, I'm then just trying to look through. So the Drew more. Carey one is really good. Uh, that, so the Brendan Schaub in the UFC connection, the, pieces that so um ari shafir and joe rogan are huge friends like really really good close friends so much so that some of ari shafir stories will reference his i have a friend that's connected to ufc and he wouldn't say his name <laughs> but then in later seasons he's like everybody knows it's joe rogan <laughs> right is, yeah. is, you know, like, <laughs> so, but then joe rogan comes on and tells a story so uh, if you go down that like if you go down the Brendan Schaub rabbit hole, uh, definitely watch the Joe Rogan story about meeting a crazy stripper. The shit mouth, <laughs> the shit breath one is just so fucking good. We just watched that shit last breath. night. It had like we've watched so much of this that we'll watch one of these. It will be the number one recommended on a rec- row of recommended, right? And we'll watch, well, that first one will be there and we'll just be like, yep, let's watch that one. So we'll watch that. And when we come back after it's done, we'll go back to our recommended and a new one will be in that first spot and we'll just watch that. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It, oh, it's so good. It looks like um, so many fun people. And like you said, the some of the better ones are, are ones are likely to be ones I've never even heard of the person. Yeah. I just don't don't hesitate to watch one just because you've never heard of the person. A great example is Joey Diaz. I've heard of Uh, him. Yeah. He's this like older Italian. He's Jewish. Oh, I'm looking at him right now, actually. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But he looks like an older Italian guy, but he's Jewish actually. Uh, And he's kind the first story I listened to of his, I'm just like, I can't follow this guy because it's kind of rambling. He's a Mm -hmm. recovering addict which is another recurring theme. That's an, This is also a great, like it's a great observation of because they are so vulnerable and intimate. Like you get to actually start to see the persona. Is it like these recurring themes that these comedians have? Right. Yeah. Uh, which is also from another standpoint is just like really interesting to do this. Um, uh, let's see here. So Joey Diaz is really good. That fucking Drew Carey one, A Bad Trip at Electric Daisy Carnival, is really great because he, he he's telling the story about how his friends were really high on acid at the Electric Daisy Carnival. And every time he references his friends being on acid, he's like, but I wasn't on acid because I'm the host of uh, of uh, Price is Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically saying like, yeah, I'm I was fucked up with all of them, but you're not going to hear any of that stuff because I will lose my job. Uh, uh, Brent Erst is another one. That's He's so really funny good. said that. I've been scrolling down through most of this discussion. And there's more and more and more. And right in front of me right now is Brent Erst. <laughs> Baby's uh, BJ Okerson is another one. I like a lot of his stories. Um, Jessa Reed, Meth P. She's the one with the Meth P one. Oh, yeah. I passed that one. Um. Let's see here. And you see some of the titles and you're just like, shit. Uh, (laughs) There's the Howie Mandel one. That's a great one. I'm trying to find the guy who tells the story about the the gangbanger because it it really is like this just fantastic story. Um, If I find that one, I will send it to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Because it's really good. Yeah, I uh, honestly, like, I'm just looking through this and I was like, I, I would recommend every fucking one of these, even the ones I haven't seen yet, you know? Steve Simone, that's the guy. Steve Simone, so, okay. Yep, so Steve Simone is the name of the guy, and then I'm going to see now if I can... Let's, uh, oh, man, yeah, Henry Rollins. I saw he looks a little nuts. Oh, wow. oh man. <laughs> he looks a little haggard. I, and I and fucking I love him. Black Flag and I love Henry Rollins. And like, listen, to, that's a great like behind the music almost story because he talks about like the, his early days with Black Flag. 
Oh, so fucking. And how he like was just this stupid like 17 year old kid. And there are all these like 35 year old guys who were in this like punk band that brought him on. And how there's this one fucking guy that just like he idolized and the guy fucking knew it and just took advantage of it, you know. And one day told him, he's like, you're a real asshole. And he's like, yeah, I'm an asshole. <laughs> and he's like, you need to do something about that. And he's like, what should I do about being an asshole? He's like, you need to take some acid. <laughs> and then the rest of the story is about how he t- drops it. Because he's like, I didn't do drugs. I didn't do any drugs. I'd never done any drugs before. But this guy told me I needed to do acid. And I was going to fucking do acid that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so fucking good. Oh, man. Yeah. The voice of God. So Steve Simone, the voice of God. When Steve Simone finally found his voice as a comic, he performed for a group of menacing men. And uh, oh man, that it's one of these. It's uh, it's uns it, it's totally unsuspecting. Where I'm I'm listening to this and I'm laughing, and by the end of it, I am sobbing like and just not expecting it at all. S- super good. That sounds awesome. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. Like, you know, early in the run. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is not happening. We filled a lot of time with that. Good deal. I'm excited, though. That's one of my favorite things about the, you know, this is like, you know, what uh, what you're seeing that you're excited about. Yeah. So. that That's a great one. I'm, we I'm went to the drive-in one. and saw oh, really? uh, Toy Story 4 and um, Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, uh, no, the other, the other the one, uh, Far From Home. I haven't seen any of those. That sounds yeah. Toy, those were good. And then they, um, this drive-in was like, if there's enough cars after Spider-Man, we'll play the newest uh, Men in Black movie too. <laughs> and they, and they did. They did. And, oh, yeah, so but it would have been that we would have been there till like four in the morning, and Ash was already passing out. And I'm like, babe, let's just go home. So we left. Wow. But yeah, yeah we like packed up the van and popped popcorn and did all this great stuff. Oh, and then like, wow. Yeah, like had because uh, they do the radio thing now instead of like having the speaker that hangs on your window. So we had like a boom box that had like the the tuned to the channel so that in that way like it was great sound wow. sitting in the van and the van was all oh man it was fantastic that sounds we had a, awesome that yeah, was so great so Whoa. uh we did that i'm sure i'm forgetting this some big monumental shit. thing that we did probably during that time it is a busy month just fucking just go 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 um and still shit i'm gonna be in minnesota in two days yeah make make a list we'll we'll touch on the rest of it <laughs> yeah so in our, in our next on-camera appearance which <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely a when we'll be camera. talking goonies which yeah, is going to be fuck. fucking fantastic long walk short drink remember it's goonies is gonna yep, have but to happen we, but it's gonna happen in some serious style <laughs> even with the goonies we still won't talk more longer than the movie is so, <laughs> okay oh we'll do the timer okay yeah yeah uh <laughs> Uh, even for the Goonies. Um, all right. Uh, so let's wrap up. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for joining, Dave. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I missed it. God, this was fun. I missed it, too. I'm um, looking forward to seeing you and the bride in the next hours, like yeah. a matter of hours. Day after tomorrow. Yeah. I 24 hours from when I wake up tomorrow morning. That's true. Oh, wow. I will be flying out. Like, I'll be on a plane flying to Chicago to then catch a connecting flight to Minnesota. Fucking A. Yeah. I, so. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, thank you so much, Long Walkers, for joining us. Head over to Twitter and follow us at LWSD Pod. Uh, you can find us at LWSDPod.com. You can also search any of your favorite podcasting apps. Uh, iTunes, as long as that it still exists, uh, <laughs> Stitcher, fucking goddamn, all these things. Exactly. Uh, you can just search us and subscribe. That'd be fantastic. Leave us a review on there. Nobody will see it for that much longer, <laughs> if especially if it's on iTunes. So, what the hell? Take a chance on us. Um, head over to audibletrial.com slash LWSD. Sign up for your auto Audible book trial. Uh, and download your free audio book on us. Um, I'm trying to think. Right now, I am listening to... I am in the final pages of uh, 
the drawing of three, the second dark tower book. Uh, I would recommend that it's read by Frank Muller. It's the introduction of some characters that exist for the rest of the series. Um, it's a brilliant reading. Uh, I would highly recommend that. Speaking of Stephen King, I just going to put this last thing in here. We went to, uh, do they have half price books by you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have half price books too. And they had this major sale where they actually rented out the arena of the college that's right Whoa. next to them <laughs> and just like filled the floor of the arena with books. There's just boxes of books like overstock. Right. And I, this, I listen, I have moments like this in my life. This happened to be one of them where I was like, man, it would be really awesome if I found a copy of the Bachman books at this sale. But I'm like, there's no way there's going to be any Stephen King there because that's just market. Like they will make money on Stephen King. Right. And I'm going through, there was no rhyme or reason. They were only split up by genre. So I'm in the fiction section and that took up the most of everything. Right. Yeah. And there's no alphabetical author order. It's just, there's, uh, there's these collapsible tables that are filled with books with the spines facing up and below them are stacks of boxes of more books. So then there's just these workers that at any gaps that they would see, they would grab four books out of the boxes and put them in the gaps and just keep <laughs> like filling them up again. No rhyme or reason. It's just random grabbing. Right. <laughs> and I'm going. And so I'm just looking down the spines and I'm looking for King. Like I'm looking for the word King. Right. Yeah. And I, See this spine. Can you oh, see yeah. that? Like, I have that one, so I'm familiar. And I turn, and it's the fucking Bachman books. It's like the paperback <laughs> edition of the Bachman books That's awesome. for two fucking dollars. Whoa. Like two bucks. It's rage in print. Like you don't find rage in print. That's right. Like, Let's get uh, it on. <laughs> uh, We're not let, finished getting let's it on. get it on, you fucking dipshit asshole. <laughs> like, fucking just read it like a, your, uh, some emotion. Like, let's get it on, you dipshit. Like, I hope that uh, one's on Audible. <laughs> that yeah. one's worth it just for the, well. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. So, yeah. Great. So, we'll wrap it up on that. All right. Uh, but, yes. I will be in Minnesota soon. We'll eat Juicy Lucy's. Mm -hmm. We'll watch the Goonies. We'll play some pinball. We'll record some podcasts. We'll work on our podcast shit and get that all. F oh, man. It's going to fly by, but it's going to be fucking great. I can't I wait. can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Jinx. Buy me a Coke. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy you a Coke when I get there. When they hopefully it won't be an empty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Fuckers. Every 10th person got fucked. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. I'm out of here. We will talk to you soon. All right. Take care, buddy. Bye.